Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is my own lecture. Uh, I have my own notes for algebra geometry. And uh, yeah, pretty much this is why I want to start. So uh, so uh, some of the uh, video, uh, some of the previous idea uh, in algebra geometry were based on the category theory that I was, uh, I was uh, introduced. So uh, this is my uh, category video list. So talking about co-limit co and the direct limit and uh, sometimes the co-product kernel and co-kernel and also some special categories. And uh, yeah, so I may use some of them in this video. And uh, yeah, hope you guys subscribe to my channel. So my channel is contains about uh, higher mathematics or physics or some sometimes I will do some uh, Python coding. But uh, the most I like is the pure mathematics. So this is my own lecture and uh, my own notes and hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Okay, so uh, this is my first video about algebraic geometry. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's start. So I want to introduce. So in this video, I want to introduce the pre-shift and shift. Okay, so this is somewhat like algebraic geometry one one. But if you see the so the uh, so usually the textbook, I think it's Harshon, and also uh, Vettel. Okay, so I think it's this. If I spell it wrong, hopefully there's a Vettel has a book called The Rising Sea of Algebraic Geometry. So there is a book called The Rising Sea of Algebraic Geometry. This is 800 pages. And I think Harson is five, uh, 500 pages, which is very long. So I try to uh, take its merits and uh, uh, introduce with you guys. OK, so pre-shift and shift. Uh, these are uh, 101. OK, because I, I forget about the variety. I think variety is not. Uh, uh, you can use skin. A variety is a special type of skin. So I will try to uh, introduce this. Okay, so let me just, so this uh, starting point is that it's a topological space and then that T of X to be the categories. So this T of X is a category. Okay, so the object is basically the open set. So open set in X. And the uh, morphism will be uh, if you inc if you have a two open set that say U and V, and uh, you, uh, uh, you, uh, covers V or a V is a subset of U and uh, there's a U morphism, right? There's a morphism. For, so I define in, in this case, there's a morphism from U to V. Okay, basically just the, basically just the restriction map, okay? And then there's a unique, right? So this is unique, right? So the morphism exists only for uh, this type of, uh, this situation given any U and V and uh, if V is a subset of U, there is a unique morphism, okay? And uh, the composition is just a function, you know, a function composition. Okay, so now that we can define a pre-shift. Okay, so the pre-shift uh, is basically the functor, uh, as you say, the functor from T of X to C. Okay, so C is another category. Okay, so in 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 uh, usually in uh, algebraic geometry, this C will be the abelian group, or rings, or basically module. Okay, so abelian group is each morphism is a uh, each uh, object is abelian group morphism is abelian homomorphism and the rings so so ring homomorphism module module homomorphism. Okay, so this means that uh, uh, if you cover V, then uh, you will have F of U. Right, F of U is a uh, object in C and the uh, F of V, there is a restriction map, right? It's called RUV. This is called restriction. Okay, so this is a pre-shift, right? So pre-shift, it looks like doesn't have any, uh, it's very, uh, very uh, general. Okay, so some, uh, some language. So the elements of F of U are called sections. Okay. And, uh, or basically uh, your element of F of U. So F of U is an object in a category, maybe an abelian group ring. And also, uh, and uh, one notation is that F of U, some people like to write uh, gamma U F. Okay, and basically this is actually the cohomology, uh, the shift cohomology that uh, uh, I will introduce maybe in a very, very future that you can define H zero U F, right? This is, uh, this is a zero cohomology, and the uh, f of x is called a global section. Okay, so now let's define another thing called the uh, stocks. Okay, so stocks is uh, basically, uh, let's see, 
right? So you can let the P belongs to X, and uh, there's a you can consider all the open sets, right? So T P uh, let's say X is all the all all the open sets of the cover P. Basically, this is a subcategory. Okay, and uh, uh, right, you can for F O P, right? You can say that you can, or you can see this, right? So uh, you can take all the all the open set which cover P and then take the co limits, right? Okay, so this is a co limit and uh, F of U. Okay, so this is called uh, F of U. This is called stocks. Okay. Okay. Okay, so obviously that uh, by construction, right, for every U belongs to TPX, right, there is this a map, right? There is this a map from uh, F of U to F of P. Okay, so this map, let's say this is a restriction map, right? So this, uh, let's say if V belongs to TPX and the F belongs to F of U and the G belongs to F of V, the, then you can define image, right? You, you can say the image, uh, you can define image. So if, uh, let's say, right, so image of uh, FG in F of P are equal, Okay, means that uh, if there is this the W belongs to TPX. Okay, and then this W containing in the U intersection with V. Okay, then such that uh, R U W F is the same as R V W G. Okay, probably this, uh, this sentence is hard to understand, right? but basically it says that uh, if you take uh, if you have U and V, right? If you have U and V, and the both of, and they have the non-trivial intersection, and then you take a, every F, right? This F can can use this map, direct map to stocks, right? You are mapped to something, uh, some some guy in the stocks, right? And uh, this V also, uh, this element G also mapped into stocks, right? So this idea is that uh, if you can find W that, uh, which is another very small interval here such that uh, if you do the restriction on U to WF and the same as V to WG, if they are the same, this is called the, uh, okay, so this mean, uh, this is, so the, the image, right? So now you have the image of this F, you know, F of U in F of P is called germs. Okay, this is also uh, sometimes, I think it's, uh, usually, I think it's also famous, right? So usually people will write F and the U. Okay, so this uh, this tuple is the the same as, as the set of these tuples are called germs. Okay, so uh, another way is that uh, when somebody write this, right, this is the same means that so you can take any F, right? This F can be belongs to uh, F of U and uh, for this u right and uh, if they are the same means that you can find w belongs to u intersection v such that uh, r u uh, r u w f right you restricting e this element in term into f o p is the same as r uh, v w g okay so this is called germs okay so i introduce the stocks and germs well algebra is the key idea in algebraic geometry is everything is very very uh, abstract okay <laughs> Okay, so also there is an example that also famous. Let's say if you take the open set of uh, X, and you can define a, a sheaf of U, right? So basically, it's all a continuous all a function which is continuous from U to R. F is continuous. So this is a pre sheaf. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Also. Uh, it's talking about and then this is called a constant pre sheaf. So this is constant pre sheaf is also famous, right? So for every u in x, and then you can define a restriction map such f of x to map of f of u is a constant, right? So you just map constant and it's constant. Okay, it's is isomorphism. Okay. Okay, so now uh, let's define a pre sheaf. Uh, let's define sheaf. Right, so definition. So now let's talk about shift, a pre-shift. So basically you can see the go to see the Wikipedia and find a proof, right? But basically pre-shift, oh by the way, in, in my video that I always I uh in this kind of algebraic geometry, I want to list the uh, important fact and uh, I try to prove less, right? Because I mean the algebraic geometry proof is very long that probably some of them are very difficult. 
and a very waste of time, right? So the so I will, I only highlight, and if you're interested, you can uh, just type the type the keywords and then understand. Okay, so pre shift is a a shift. If uh, it's satisfied, the first one called identity axiom. Okay, so this one is identity axiom. Identity axiom. Okay, so it means that if uh, right, so let's say you take any for any, uh, if you take any open set of X. Okay, and uh, let's say this is guys open cover, open cover of U, belongs to T of X. Right, so this means that u is an open cover of this, right? So ui, i belongs to i, and uh, if if for every uh, and let's say uh, sorry, and uh, let's say you take any two elements, let's say f one, f two, belongs to f u. Okay, so basically you take you take uh, these two elements. It it if f u and uh, if for every i. Right, you can restrict R U U I, so restricting from U to U I F, the same as R U U I for is it F one F two? If you can take if you take two functions in U such that this U this function I uh, restricted to each opens uh, sub this op open cover is the same, they they should be the same, right? So F one equals to F two. This is identity axiom, okay. And this is the now this is the gluing property. Okay, this gluing property is also uh, famous, like in the many for in the differential geometry or something that uh, vector bundle also famous, right? So basically, if you have any open cover, the same setting, and uh, let's say if you take f of i belongs to f of let's say u i, right? Such that uh, they are restricting to each uh, subsets are the same a uh, sub uh, the intersection. So it means that. Uh, if you take R U I and then restrict it to R U I intersection U J and then put your F of I in. If this, if uh this guy the same as, uh, if you uh, R U J right and the, uh, let's say uh, oof, you see uh this guy's geometry is very difficult. I don't even understand what you are saying. So given so for every every i you take f of i if you restricting from u i to u i intersection with u j, the u j u i intersection with u j f of j are the same, then you can say that there is a gluing right. So you can glue in each small open cover and it forms the results right. So basically there exists f belongs to the global section right f of u such that uh, the restricting from u to u i is the same as f i right. So R R U U I F is the same as F of I for every uh I. Okay, so hope hope these two uh, axiom, you guess you got some intuition. Okay, I think the, the definition is uh, obviously uh yeah okay. Okay, and also uh sometimes uh there's an additional one. So this additional one, I think is somehow people somehow like use. That uh, usually uh, we will define the empty set right into the final object in C. Okay, so if you don't know about final object, it means that the uh, final object in the category means that uh, for every other, uh, for every let's say uh, A is a final object, means that for every uh, other object there exists a unique morphism from X to A. Okay. For example, in a group theory, that uh, in a group uh, category, this A will be the trivial group, right? Because every object has one special homomorphism that's sent. Mm. Yeah, as in the in the abelian group, that the that the final object can choose to be identity group, right? So uh, there will be the unique homomorphism from uh, this to this. Right, because every guy need to send to identity. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, for example, uh, if C is a set, then the f of phi will be a one a one element, right? Because in the sets that you just take any one element. Okay. And uh, for C to be the groups, or I'll be, I should say, usually we call abelian groups in abelian group case, and uh, this will send to be the trivial group.
Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, so there are many examples of sheaf, and you can Google and find a lot of them. Okay, the famous, I think the famous one is that, uh, let's say, exit topological space. Okay, so usually uh, you, you can view it, uh, in this case, I use small manifolds, and uh, the, you can define a pre sheaf FOU that I just defined that from U to R, which is continuous. So F is a uh, uh, pre sheaf, F is a sh not just a pre sheaf, it's a sheaf. Okay, you can try to prove this. This is not very simple. Okay. Uh, okay, but uh, if you add, uh, right, so it is continue. If you if you require to be smooth manifold, then you can say this is smooth, right? This is shift, right? But if you uh, added a bounded or constant something, then you it, it, it will not be a shift. Okay. Okay, and then there is a strange fact that uh, if X is a topological space, and uh, X is irreducible. Well, this is in terms of algebraic geometry, right? Irreducible means that you cannot separate into different uh, components. So you, you can prove that any constant uh, pre sheaf pre sheaf is a sheaf. Okay. So uh, let me just write down the definition. So S is irreducible if uh, X cannot. Be written as the union of two non-empty closed set. Subset. Okay. Okay. There is a thing called also another example called sky square per sheaf. Okay, so this means that uh, X is topological space, and then you take the let's say P belongs to X, and then you can define a, let's say G is abelian group. Okay, and then you can define a sky curve shift that people call it IPG. Okay, so this is a shift, right? So X on U, any open set will give you something, right? So if P belongs to U, or if P belongs to U, then it can give you what? It can give you uh, G, otherwise it's zero. Okay, so it's a special shift that uh, on each, uh, you can, so for given a P, there is this a shift called a skyscraper, uh, skyscraper shift, right? So this is a P that is stand up. Right? So, okay, and then also you can check that uh, what is the stocks of a skyscraper shift, right? So if you take any G, Q, right, you take the stocks, and uh, if, if Q belongs to the closure of P, then it will be G, otherwise it will not be G. Ooh, okay. Okay, let me just say something. Okay, and there's a called the, uh, yeah, there's uh, also another example that I think very important is somebody, uh, if you have a continuous map from uh, to topological space, so multiple continuous, and you can define, uh, and then there is a pre sheaf right? So suppose there's a pre sheaf on X, Right, so and you can define a row of u, define to be all a uh, map from u to uh, y. Right, so we take any u is an open set of x, and then for each uh, row of u, define s u to y. Right, so row of u should be a sheaf. Right, so s, uh, or at, at least now it's pre sheaf, s from u to y such that the s is continuous, and the composition with uh, this mu is zero uh, identity. Right, so you map this so s. Mu will be identity on U. Okay, this is called the, uh, uh, I think it's called the uh, sheaf of sections. Uh, right, so any continuous map, you take a section that becomes a sheaf. Okay, so the sheaf of sections. Uh, I think this is. Uh, used in the fundamental group. I think fundamental group at least had has some relationship with the lo local constant sheet. Okay, so let's give another definition. So about shift that I can, there's a lot more that I want to talk, right? But uh, somehow, like, let me just summarize. Uh, sorry, let me just introduce a map between two sheaf, right? So uh, let's say uh, you get some mu from y to x, which is a two a continuous map from topological space, then you can define a direct image. 
Okay, uh, let's say f is a shift on y, right? So f is shift on y. I want to introduce a, a map. I want to introduce another shift on x, right? So I, I should, let's call it a direct image. Yeah, this is called the direct image of f, right? Directed image. Right, so how, how, how should I define this, right? So this guy should act on the open set of x, right? Because it's a shift, right? So let's take u belongs to the open set of x. And this guy need to sp sp speak out the, the number, uh, sorry, speak out a, a, a category structure, right? So, uh, right, so what should we do, right? So uh, notice that this guy is continuous, right? So I can take an inverse, right? So inverse will be the uh, open saying y, right? So obviously that the simple definition will be f uh, mu inverse u. Right, so this guy will be open, right? Because mu is open, mu is continuous, right? So your advanced calculus tell you that the inverse, the continuous inverse of open set is open. So this guy is a f act on open set, so it's a shift. Okay, so very uh, natural definition. Okay, so you can check that uh, this guy is a shift on uh, x if uh, f is a shift on y. Okay, and uh, uh, this example is uh, interesting that you can check. Let's say if you take an right, injective map from P to X, right? So P, uh, you just want one point, right? Put into X, if this is the inclusion, then I, you can ask what is, the, what is the direct image, right? In terms of the direct image become like the skyscraper shift, okay? So basically, let's say, uh, let's say this is, Let's call it I. Okay, so what what is the push for uh, direct image of uh, this F defined on Y? Right. So let's say. Uh, right. So it's you can put uh, if there's a group G here, right? So if you group G here, then you can define the constant shift, right? So you can put the constant shift direct image the direct image of this constant shift becomes skyscrapers. Okay, it's a very a cool exercise. Okay, and uh, okay, so then another definition. This is the uh, pre shift. Let's say f is a pre shift or shift. Okay, and then you can define a restricting shift, right? So you take any open set and then you can define a uh, restricting, right? So basically, you restricted every result into u. Okay, so you can define f restricted on u, v define of f of v. For any v to be a t of u, okay, and the f restricted on u is defined for what? It's a pre shift, right? It's a pre shift. So your uh, so shift on uh, on the u, right? So now this become a uh, another shift on u. So basically, just do a restriction, right? This is not the. Uh, by the way, so when I see f u v, I mean uh, uh, I mean what? I mean the map. Basically, uh, I mean a restriction map, right? So basically, you can take U and then restrict it in, into V. Okay. Okay. So just def or basically you just write down definite F of V. Right? So for every V become the open set of U, right? So basically, this is just the you just uh, do a restriction. Okay. And then for every P belongs to U, your F restricting to U, right? Go to P will be the, the same as dog F or P. Okay. And uh, another I want to say is that you take the continuous map from Y to X. And uh, let's say you take Q belongs to, uh, you have a shift or pre shift on Y, right? So let's say you have uh, still on Y. And uh, now you take Q belongs to Y. And uh, you can, let's say, mu Q is just P belongs to X. And you can check that uh, uh, you're restricting uh, your direct image f, right? So direct image of f is a pre is a shift a pre shift on x, right? So you can take it's stocks on p. It's basically the limit of the right. So it's basically limits of the all the open cover uh, cover p, and then you take the mu star f of u. Right? This is definition, right? And then this guy will become a Limit TPX 
F U inverse U. Okay. Okay. So it's just uh, something. Okay. So you can uh, once you have this, then you can say that uh, there is a canonical map. So for every uh, for every U belongs to the open set of X. There is a canonical map. Let's say F mu inverse U. Okay. So map into the limit. Right, so we can take the TQY f of uh, v f of q okay 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 yeah so basically you get uh, so from here that the uh, right for the unit so you, you can take a core limit so this guy so basically every time you have a least map right then you will naturally induce a map on stocks Oh, you sorry. Uh, I say so let me just write down. So you will once you have this map and the f is a pre shift or shift on y, then there is a canonical map that mu star uh, f right, which is the stocks on p is the right image on x map to f of q. Okay, so remember that uh, in the definition that the mu of q is a p. Right, so you take q on this, right? So uh, you, this map somehow like the reverse, right? So this. Okay, so uh, I think this is what I want to say, at least for uh, for the ring, uh, sorry, at least for a shift and pre-shift. And finally, I want to discuss, I want to say something uh, called the fame, uh, ring space. Okay, so final definition is a ring space. This is somehow like uh, the heart of algebraic geometry, right? So let's say X is a topological space. And then you can take the, okay, so let's say uh, this uh, shift of rings, on x okay and then this x of x is called a uh, ring space ring space okay so basically it's the uh topological space with a sheath but the sheath of rings then this is usually called this is called ring space so it's very general that if your sheath is a ring space is a your sheath is a sheath of ring then basically this is a ring space okay and then this guy is called a structure sheath Okay, and uh, and then uh, you, if you on X, right? So take the open set and the F of U, the elements. So I should say the elements, the elements of F of U is called function. Okay, so this is uh, same as you take, for example, you take X to be some smooth manifold and uh, this structure shift defined to be all the continuous map or all the smooth map on, X, on it. And become a function that people uh, need to like to uh, introduce. Okay, so uh, this is a structure sheath and a uh, and a ring space. And next time we can define uh, uh, this OS module. Okay, so basically you can define a sheath for modules uh, respect to some particular ring space, which will be the important uh, property, uh, important start point of our uh, of this algebraic geometry. Uh, okay, so this will be really, really difficult uh, once we keep going. Okay, so see you guys uh, next videos.